I'm going to narrate this tutorial on the System 99 head assembly for you. Um, at the top, let me zoom in here a bit. At the top of the system, you have a carabiner. Beneath that is a swivel. And of course, beneath that is the head assembly backing plate. Now, the uh, swivel, of course, enables the head assembly to turn 360 degrees. Okay, now, um, primary components of the head assembly are the backing plate you can see right here. Um, the backing plate material is uh, three, 3 eighths of an inch thick aluminum. I notice there's an offset bend in this. The reason it's bent like that is so that the head will uh, hang straight under load. If it uh, didn't have that bend in it, what you'd have is a uh, when you put a load on it, the system would hang like this, which you wouldn't want. Okay, so we have the backing plate with the bend in it. On the back of the backing plate are a number of labels. Um, also, the uh, heads of some of the fasteners along here, the bottom row. The five is one here. This is the back side of the steel axle bolt that the drum rides on. Also, if you notice, there's two holes at the top. This is the primary anchor hole, where the swivel right now is uh, connected, and this one here is the backup tie-off hole. At the bottom of the backing plate are three screws, I mean, I'm sorry, three holes. These two are for the B-system pulley to bolt on. This one is for a carabiner for the A-system, where you can uh, change your um, pulleys. Now we go to the front. There are four things mounted on the front. Of course the first one here is the drum. And you have three rope guides. This large one over here, which is the free side rope guide. Now it covers about a third of the uh, drum area. And also please notice that it lines up with the front loop of rope that we're going to put on here in a moment. The bottom is a little shoe or block rope guide. Um, this has a contoured area that's cut out where the rope travels. And this keeps the rope from tangling and overlapping. And over here we have the uh, load side rope guide, which, if you can see here, I hope, lines up with the back loop of rope the drum. Now, the drum itself. There are three screws that hold the cap on. Um, the carrying bolt that goes through the center of it uh, has been tested at, I believe it's 30, 35,000 pounds uh, to break it, so it's not likely to break. Um, now, there's an area here that's cut out. This is where the rope travels. Uh, the aluminum under this area, before you get to the inside, is 3 eighths of an inch thick. Uh, at the back of the drum and the front of the drum is a pair of sealed ball rings, so the system is water resistant. In the drum is something called a spray clutch, which is also a one-way clutch. Um, if this looks like it could be the winch on the deck of a sailboat, you're absolutely right. Uh, the main difference with that, of course, is this is mounted on a portable backing plate. And you can use it in any direction or any angle. Um, the, um, as I said, I think earlier, the unit weighs three and a half pounds. The backing plate measures eight and three quarters tall by four and three quarters wide. The drum from side to side, the diameter, is three and a half inches. 
Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to put the rope on it for you so you can see what that looks like and then I will try to describe the break at the same time. Now I'm sliding the rope up through the load side rope guide over top of the drum and out the left side rope guide and back in through the shoe guide block at the bottom. And so here's one turn of rope back out again second turn of rope and back out up and out the free side rope guide and there we have two and a half turns uh, the rope is a 6,000 pound test static kern mantle rope it's got a nylon inside uh, that's the uh, kern and the mantle is polyester 6,000 pound capacity 3 eighths of an inch diameter which is also 9.5 millimeter it is rot and, re uh, rot and mildew resistant it is resistant to ultraviolet ray etc and if you notice you can count one two three coils of rope now that adds up to 360 360 and 180 adds up to 900 degrees of surface contact area the rope has on the one-way drum. Now, how the brake works is similar to that of a sailboat deck winch or a, or a uh, running spool or a capstan winch or there's a hundred names for them. By the way, the Navy calls this uh, sometimes the handy billy, which is a, the name for a portable mechanical advantage block system. Anyway, please observe the screws as I pull on the free side rope. They're turning because you wouldn't want friction to uh, be in the, in the uh, uh, picture when you're trying to lift the load. Only when you want to hold it stationary and you want to lower it. By the way, this guide here on the free side is designed so that you can pull horizontally or even above horizontal to lift vertically. But as soon as you stop pulling on this side of the rope, the free side rope, hard enough to load, what happens is the drop stops. The friction brake takes over. The brake is always 90 percent. 180. Um, you would only have to hold 18 pounds of force side rope. 2 pounds over here. Right. A post rocket would be called or a ship card. Rope sack brake. And with pulleys underneath it, attached to these holes here, uh, you may, you're making a block and tackle system or mechanical advantage to how many pulleys you have. and the drum are all coated with a mil-spec uh, material that uh, helps to resist corrosion or abrasion. If that's as good as I can think of it, I'm going to uh, put it on its rigged so we can check that out.